This 1905 dressing video will start with the hair. I have very long hair, as you can see here, so to add additional volume, I let it dry in braids to give it some wave. Edwardian hair is characterized by volume, so this starts me out on the right foot. This isn't a hair tutorial video, so through the magic of editing, we'll get it put up really quickly. This is a pretty modest volume by Edwardian standards, but I genuinely like this style of hair. Next up, let's get to the undergarments. My bottom layer is a chemise, which goes under everything. Over my chemise, I'm tying on a false rump, and the pattern for this came from Virgil's Fine Goods. The ideal silhouette of the early 1900s was dramatically curvy, and this illusion was achieved by generous padding. The S-Bend corset goes over this. This corset came from Red Threaded. Despite how it looks, this really doesn't compress my waist much at all. It just looks like it does thanks to padding at the hips, which helps to give a dramatic hip spring, again part of that curvy illusion. After the corset comes the petticoats. I wear three with this outfit. One lightweight cotton lawn, a second heavier cotton, and a third of a stiffer cotton organdy. All three have ruffles at the bottom to give extra volume to the hem of my final skirt, which is quite heavy. The petticoats also help to smooth out all of the lines with the corsetry and the padding that we've been adding on. This is an excellent place to stop and have tea if necessary. Now we can start on the actual part of this outfit that gets seen. We'll start with the skirt. You can see the making of process for this dress in a longer video on my YouTube channel, which I'll link to down below. This skirt has a very full hem of ruffles, which add a lot of weight. One of the reasons why so many petticoats are needed to fill out this skirt. It closes at the side with hooks and snaps. Though this looks like a dress, it actually has a separate bodice, which was common in this period. The first thing that closes is a waist stay, which attaches at the center back of the garment. This helps keep everything fitted properly and relieves tension on the closures at the front of the garment. You see all sorts of closures during this period, but this bodice closes up the center front with hooks and eyes. It then has a separate flap of fashion fabric that closes across that and fastens with a snap and hooks and eyes up the side of the bodice. Finally, the center front ruffle ties closed at the neckline. There's one last step. 
Hooks and bars are sewn into the bodice and skirt and they hook together, which keeps proper tension on everything and prevents the bodice and the skirt from separating during wear. Now it's time to add the accessories. First, a belt. This dark color, along with the point in the center front, helps with the illusion of creating a small waist. Next is the jewelry I made for this dress. I loved the bright coral and shiny gold with the simplicity of the white gown. My shoes and stockings are from American Duchess. And last, but certainly not least, is a giant, elegant Edwardian hat, perhaps the most fun accessory of them all. Thanks for joining me on this Getting Dressed video. Now we're ready to go out and take a stroll. Shall we?